What's up guys, it's me Vic. Welcome back to another Sailor Vic YouTube video. In today's video, I'm going to be working on a pair of Princess Peach Air Force One Customs. This is going to be a collaboration with my friend Sean at Color Me Fresh on Instagram. I'm gonna pop up his handle here. You need to go and check out his stuff. It's crazy cool. He is an absolute genius when it comes to creating customs because he doesn't just paint on the outside of the shoes. He'll do the insoles, he does like the boxes, he swaps the swoosh for like a furry swoosh or whatever it is, he just goes all out with color, with texture, with graphics. I'm such an incredible artist, so make sure to go and check him out. Near the end of 2020, I reached out and I asked, I asked him, I was like, Sean, do you wanna do a collaboration? I think it would be really cool if we did a his and hers for Valentine's Day. When I asked him what themes he had in mind, he thought about Mario and Princess Peach, which was perfect. I haven't seen a lot of Princess Peach customs. I've seen a couple of Mario customs here and there, but Princess Peach and Mario haven't really been done together. So I thought, let's just riff off of that. And now here we are at the end of January and I have two weeks before Valentine's Day to knock this custom out and I haven't started painting at all. So this is what my mock-up looks like. The main theme colors are up here. So it's gonna be a mainly pink shoe with accents of yellow, blue, and green. These are the forces that we're working with today. You already know what an Air Force One looks like. These are the Air Force One lows. I do not expect the shoes to look exactly like what my, my mock-up design would look like, but it gives me a really good guideline as to like where I wanna put things, the colors that go together. I'm really excited for this project. Today is going to be day one, so we're starting today, but I'm gonna walk you through my design process. I hope you guys enjoy, and don't forget to subscribe. I'm excited to take you guys along on the ride. Let's go. Hit my mic. <laughs> Every pair of customs starts at this stage. This is easily my favorite part of the process because you don't have to be scared about ruining a new pair of shoes. Well, not yet anyways. That means you can be experimental and adventurous, try colors and graphic combinations you're unsure of but maybe might work. You could be pleasantly surprised. I take this time to jot down all the ideas I have, no matter how small or if I'm going to even use it at all. If you get stuck as you're painting, you can always refer back to the sketch if you need new ideas. As you can see, I've established my color palette, assigned characters to the layout, and even designed some backgrounds in case I need it. Sometimes I sketch it out, sometimes I just jot down notes. Bet you by the end of this process, my customs are going to look quite different from what I initially sketched out here. But that's the beauty of this. Treat your mock-ups as a guideline and not as a blueprint. Now we prep. I start at the toe box and on either side because when you're wearing these shoes, the, this is the area that creases the most. I wanna make sure that I'm taking enough of this factory finish off. So it's going to be the area that I pass through at least three or four times during this process. I would say though, if you do this a lot, you will notice that residue. It's not completely like invisible. You still see it. Next step is to use Q-tips. Is I go into these edges here. I don't know if you can see that. Any of the hard to reach places, as much as you can. So look, I, I already even see it on the Q-tip and I thought I did quite a thorough job of going through everything and like really rubbing at things. So it's this part, these parts here, that you wanna make sure you get because that's where the paint's gonna start cracking and peeling from. Quick food break, some pizza. Look at this. The crunch is unreal, oh my God. This is fig prosciutto and arugula pizza. Oh my God. Dude, the dough is amazing. It's a winner. Wow. 
Oh my god. So crunchy, listen. Mmm. That's so good. I need to get a shot of it coming out of the oven. This is so good. Mmm. All right, enough nonsense, let's get back to work. Since we have so many characters to get onto the sneakers, I'm gonna sketch them out first. You'll see that I don't get it perfect every time, but you can easily use acetone to remove any mistakes. This is also where I decide on the final layout of my characters. If I don't like the way it looks, I'll erase it and do it again. You'll see this is what I do a lot of in this project. Okay, um, after a couple hours of working, I just took off my beanie. I don't know, I think my hair is gonna look really flat on top. <laughs> Whatever, I have a, it's, it was like giving me a bit of a headache, so I took it off at the end of the day. Just coming in to update you on what I managed to finish in a couple of hours, not a lot. Um, I got some sketching done. So I have sketching on the outside of the shoes on both of them actually. So this one just has Peach and her umbrella, and then this one has Bowser and Peach. And I had to play around with the positioning of where the characters were going, and you know, this, this side's a little bit more complex, so it took a little bit more time. I also put the toad onto the back, as you can see that. I think it's gonna look great. I think it's gonna look really cool. So I'm gonna leave that there. And then on the toe box, so in my original design, I actually had the brick, I had the brick, which is here, and the question mark, like the mystery box, where you get your mushrooms and your flowers from. I was intending to put that right in the center of the toe box, but then when I put a square, like a perfect square onto the toe box, I didn't take into account these dots that would be here. So they don't align perfectly because they're not a perfect square grid. So it just didn't look right. And then I looked up at the tongue and I was like, wait, there's this perfect like little rectangle here. I could just paint them here instead. And I think that that would fit a lot better. I'm gonna put Peach's crown here, which is what I sketched out. Um, again, the two toads are on the back. I think those are gonna look really cute because she is princess of the, the toad kingdom, I think. She's the princess of the toad kingdom. So the next time I get back to this, I'm going to be sketching on the insides and then start painting. I almost thought that I would get to start painting today, but that was definitely not gonna happen. And it's already almost six o'clock by the time I wrap this up, clean up, there's just a lot to do. So I don't wanna burn myself out. I'm gonna call it a day. The next time I get back to this project, I'll see you guys then. All right, I'm starting off day two, wrapping up all of the sketches around the shoes, getting the characters where I want them, and then we're gonna go into painting. For this project, I'm using a mix of Alpha 6 Corporation and Angelus Direct paints. Anything that I use, I will always link in the description box. If you know you're gonna be mixing colors, make a batch with more than what you think you need. Remember, each panel needs at least three to four coats of paint, sometimes even more. The first coat is where I get all of my dirty work done. Now, what I mean by this is you can use this opportunity to get into all the harder to reach places, especially in the end when all the neighboring panels will already be fully painted. For example, the stitches and underneath the stitches. Use your brush to maneuver the paint in between the holes so that you cover all white spots. I see a lot of people doing this, and to be honest, I'm guilty of it sometimes too. But if you're painting a larger panel, don't use a dinky little brush. Use a flat, wide brush so that you can cover a larger area and prevent streaking. On the other hand, if you're painting small details or you need to get into tight spaces, use a small detail brush. This way, your details will always be squeaky clean. Notice how my brushes are getting smaller and smaller as I get more and more detailed.
All right, guys. So today we're actually on day three. I skipped filming yesterday on day two because I was just juggling a whole bunch of projects and I only painted for about, I don't know, three to four hours. I did the time lapse portion, but I didn't check in with you guys because it was just a heads down kind of working day for me. But today I wanted to really get into the meat of this project. So I figured I'd check in with you guys, show you what I have so far, talk you through it, talk you through some of the changes and the designs, and then we'll move forward with just painting. As you can see, I did some of the color blocking, some of the major panels. Those I did go ahead and paint yesterday. The first couple of layers for me, you usually is when I go in to see whether the colors on the neighboring panels are looking good together. So it's really working on like the color story. I also pretty much went into these toad graphics on the inside of the shoe here. Um, they're looking pretty cute, looking pretty good. I've got a Goomba that I haven't finished doing yet and I haven't really touched the larger graphics that are on the outside. This peach graphic here, I actually erased what I had done and redid it because I think this one spans the shoe a little bit more. The other one was like really tight and kind of just stuck to this center area here and I didn't want that I wanted it to kind of like stretch a little bit further so I didn't have just empty space on either side and on the inside here I wanted a piranha plant that was gonna be going after Toadette and I was gonna put him right here. However, I thought about it and I was like, you know what, the base of the piranha plant usually comes out of a tunnel. So I figured I would make them the green tunnels and then have the piranha plant coming out of one of them chasing Toadette. That's a little bit um, of a change in design. But like I said, as you're working on the shoes, things start to make more sense. You find more connections and you know, as the graphics flow around the shoes, you're going to probably change your mind on what you're putting there. That is where we're at today. I think what I'm going to do now is just go and grab a cup of coffee and when I come back we're going to get right into working. You know what? I'm going to take you guys with me. Let's go. Good morning. Thank you. All right, I'm back with my coffee. Let's have a sip of this. I was so flustered taking the camera out with me that I went all the way down to the coffee shop, forgot my mask, and then they asked me to put on my mask again. I had to run back up and then go back and get the coffee again. That was a very bad idea. But anyways, I have my coffee, so we'll get cracking on the painting. All right, so when I'm painting, I do move my video lights really close to my desk. I have really bad eyes. I don't like straining them by painting in really dark spaces, so I always have lights just flooding the workspace. This is where I'm tackling the peach and Bowser on the outside of the shoes. This is the largest graphic for this project, so it really took me the longest to paint. But I won't blabber on, I'll let you enjoy the time lapse of peach and Bowser coming to life. All right guys, it is the next morning, so I spent all of last night painting. I just wanted to hop on here quickly and share with you 
what I have done so far and I realized that I have about, I don't know, somewhere between 40 to 50 hours of footage from time lapses and like two camera angles that I have collected. That's definitely enough content for more than one video, but I'm gonna cut it here so that this can be part one. I'll run through, you know, what I have done so far and then I'm gonna go ahead and start part two where I do my painting today and you get to see the progress for what is I think day four. I finished the outer graphics, so this is gonna be a major one. I think that it is looking pretty good. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments what you guys think so far. That is shoe number one. Shoe number two, I haven't started on the inside yet. Again, this is just the sketch. I've put on another two layers of this color that's on these out outer panels. Um, haven't done anything on the inside, but definitely got started on the peach graphic that's on the outside. And then also, Sean at Color Me Fresh, he has done it with his Mario shoes and I'm really excited. He just told me today that he's going to ship them out and hopefully they will come by Saturday. So when I get his shoes, I'll also do an unboxing, hopefully get my first reactions. I think it's gonna be great. I've seen his mock-up designs and I specifically told him like, don't share the final results with me because I wanna do a first impressions. Yeah, that's gonna be really good. So anyways, thank you so much for watching the first part of this video and um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys enjoyed the planning process, the sketching process the beginnings of the shoes and then stay tuned for the next video that's going to come out i'm going to start filming it right after i turn off the camera here it's going to be the second part wrapping this up anyways i hope you guys enjoyed thank you so much for watching again and make sure to subscribe make sure to follow me on instagram and i'll catch you guys next time bye oh my god oh crap i see his face